Okay, we got some at 1.3. Okay, so split your paper so we can organize our work. And let's rock and roll. So we got the square root, that's what that thing means. You've seen it before, 49. Now what a square root means is what number times itself is 49. So, so I mean, is 1 times 1 49? No, so the answer is not 1. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 4 is 16. 5 times 5, no. 6 times 6 is 36. Ooh, 7. So this would be 7, okay? Square root of 9. What number times itself is 9? Got to be the same number. 1 times 1, no. 2 times 2, 4, 3. There you go, 3. Okay? Next one. Now, 400 is the square root of 400. That's a big number. So I don't really want to go through. I'm probably not going to be able to calculate that in my head. So I go second. On a calculator, I go second. That's the top key here. Second right there. And then hit the key to the left of the 7, this key here. And then 400. I got 20. Okay? So 20 times 20. So the answer is 20. 20 is the answer. Okay, now fractions are no big deal. It's like you got to figure out two square roots in the same problem. So we got to figure out what times itself is 9, which is 3. So 3 goes on top. And then what number times itself is 64? If you don't know it, it's 8. But if you don't know it, you go second, key next to 7, 64, 8. So 3 eighths. Okay, another fraction on the next one. Square root of 16 over 25. So what times itself is 16? What times itself is 25? Well, 4 times 4 is 16. 5 times 5 is 25, so that would be 4 fifths. Okay, square root of 0 0.36. So what times what is 0 0.36? When you get a decimal, you want to use your calculator. Okay, so second... Key next to the 7, 0 0.36. Okay, I got 0 0.6. So that's your answer. Okay, now we have the square root of 54. It's round to the nearest integer. Okay, so I hit second. Key next to the 7, 54. Now, round to the nearest integer. 7 is your integer, but it can go up to 8, depending on what the number is after. Well, the number after is 3, so 3 is less than 5. It's under halfway to 8, so it stays 7. Okay, square root of 21. Round to the nearest integer. Round to nearest integer. So second, square root, 21. Okay, 4. 4 is the integer, but if there's a 5 or a higher number after, then it goes up to, the 4 goes up to a 5. So we have a 5 afterwards, so it goes up to a 5. Okay, that's that. Nothing too hard there. Next page. Okay, find the approximate side length of a square with an area of 500 square inches, okay? So draw a square. Square, all sides are the same length, okay? That, do as best you can, do not to be perfect. Now the area is 500, so if it says that's the area, you put that inside, okay? 500 square inches. All right, well, our job is to find out how long each side is. I know they're all the same. Well, how do you find the area of a square? The area of a square is equal to side times another side. Okay, that's of a square. Side times a side. Well, I know the area is 500, but I don't know the sides. Well, they have to be the same, so I'm just going to do what I did on the page before that. Okay, find the square root of 500. What times itself is 500? 
So second, key next to the seven, 500, 22. There's a three after it, so it stays 22, 22 inches. Now, if that was a rectangle, we wouldn't be able to do that, okay? But it's a square, so the sides are the same. Some of you are like, oh, area is length times width. Now, yeah, I have a rectangle of a square. It's just a side times another side because they're all the same, okay? All right, next one's another square problem. A square with an area of two, so 270 is the area. Put it inside if it says that's the area, square feet. Square units go inside. And your job is to figure out what the sides are, okay? Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. So again, area is equal to side times side. So we know our area is 270. We just don't know the sides, but they have to be the same. So I'm going to square root 270. Second, key next to 7, 270. 16.4, so it's going to stay 16 because there's a 4 after it. So 16 feet. All right, now next item on the agenda subsets of numbers a number is either rational or irrational if the number can be written as a fraction it's rational if it can't be written as a fraction because it never ends it's irrational so it's either one or the other then if it's rational it could be it could be integer that means a number that can be written without a decimal Without a fraction, sorry, I don't know why I put that there. On your paper it says fraction, so we're good. A number that can be written without a fraction, and then if it's an integer, it could be a whole number, an integer that's positive. Okay. So here's how we do these problems. Three fourths. If it's a fraction, it's rational. Now, can you write that without a fraction? No, you can't. Okay, three fourths is three fourths, and here's how you know. Here's how you can know if a rational number. So once again, if it's rational, here's what. If you get a if a number's a, if it's a fraction and it's rational, put R W R I W in that order. Anytime you get a rational, okay, we already know it's rational. Okay, so is it an integer? Or here's how we find out if the fraction is an integer. You divide the top by the bottom, divide. If you get a decimal, then it's not it, so it's rational. I, sh I shouldn't have crossed it out, I should have circled it. But it's not an integer because it's a, when I divide top by bottom, I got a decimal. So it can't be an integer, and then it can't be a whole either. Okay, so that's all you have. We'll, we'll work more on that in the coming examples. The square root of 37. Well, we got to find out what the square root of 37 is first off. Okay. Whoa, I got a decimal that never ends. So put 6.08 and then put continuation dots because it never ends. Okay. Since I have the continuation dots, I can't write it as a fraction because it never ends. Because this keeps on going forever. Okay, It goes forever and ever across the thing. It only stops there because the screen doesn't go any farther. Okay, So when a number just never ends, it's irrational. And whenever you label a number irrational, it's done. You don't have to do the RWI thing. Okay, You only do that with the rationals. So again... That's rational because it's a fraction. This is irrational because I can't write that as a fraction because it's a decimal that goes on forever. Okay, the number four, that's our next one. It's not a fraction now, but I can make it a fraction by putting a one under it. Okay, all right, so it's rational. So rational we have, now put W and I. Okay, or I and W. I first, then W. So it's R I W. So is an, an integer is a number that can be written without a fraction. Well, yeah. Anytime one's on the bottom, then it's going to be an integer. Okay. By the way, you can't put one on the bottom of the square root. Don't do that. Okay. You figure the square root out first. Put a number, a whole number out of a square root. You can put a one under, and then so it's rational because it's a. It can be written as a fraction. Okay. And it's an integer because you could also write it without a fraction. I mean, if, if whenever you have one on the bottom of the fraction, it's going to be an integer. 
Okay, remember that. It's an integer if you have a 1 on the bottom. Here I don't have a 1 on the bottom, so it's not an integer. Here there's a 1 on the bottom, it's an integer. Okay, now, is it a whole number? Well, a whole number is an init, so it's rational and it's an integer. Whole number, it's an integer that's positive. Well, it's positive, so it's all three. Rational, integer, whole. Okay, next one, negative 6. Well, I don't have a square root, so I can put a 1 under it. it makes it a fraction, so it's rational. So rational, integer, whole. Now, if the fraction has a 1 on the bottom, it's an integer. Okay. But is it a whole number? So it's a rational, it's an in it, it's rational, it's an integer, is it whole? Well, it's got to be positive to be whole, and it's a negative. So get that out of there. So just rational and integer there. Okay, the difference between that and that, the negative's there, so no whole number. Okay. Negative 20 over 53. Well, it's a fraction. Again, any time it can be written as a fraction, 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 so that's an integer, okay? Or that's rational, sorry, okay? So anytime you get rational, start with rational, put R I W so we know it's rational. To find if it's an integer, ooh, there's not a one on the bottom, okay? It's not a one on the bottom, so it's not an integer, and then it can't be whole, okay? So R is over. Rational is all you have. Should write the whole word. Okay, next one, negative 1.74. Now, whenever you start with a decimal, you need to write that as a fraction. Here's how you do that. You're going to put negative 1, and you're going to put 74 and underline it. Now, here's how you put know what number goes on the bottom. That's tenths, and that's hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, so forth. So we have two numbers after the decimal, so we put 100 underneath there. If there's only one, you put a 10 underneath there. If there's three, you put a thousand, okay? You just add a zero every time, okay? So that's a fraction, okay? 74 over 100 is a fraction. That When you start with a decimal, that's how you do it. So that's rational. So I know we got rational. But we don't have a 1 on the bottom, so it can't be an integer, and therefore it can't be a whole. Rational is all you have. Okay, next one. Pi. Well, you got to figure out what pi is on your calculator. Okay, so just hit the pi button. And it's not just 3.14. It actually goes on forever. So put 3.14 and then continuation dots. Whenever we have the continuation dots, it's irrational. It means you can't write it as a fraction because you don't know when it ends. Because you go tens, hundreds, ten thousands. Where does it end? You don't know. So that's why it's irrational. Okay. So you can't write it as a fraction. Next one, 13 over 2001. You see fraction, it's rational. So rational integer whole. But there's not a 1 on the bottom, so it can't be an integer, and then it can't be a whole. So rational is all you have. Again, anytime you have a fraction, anytime you can put it as a fraction, rational. Okay, square root 119. Well, we need to figure, get rid of the square root. Second, key next to 7, 119. Okay, 10.90 Continuation dot means it's irrational. Okay, whenever I punch. Okay, next one. Square root of 49. Okay, that's 7. You can write 7 as a fraction. You put a 1 under it. So it's rational. Okay, so just because I have that square root, I figure the square root out, but then if I have something I can make it into a fraction, it's rational. And there's a 1 underneath it, so it's an integer. So it's rational. It's an integer. Now, is it whole? Well, I don't see a negative sign, so it must be. So it's all 3. Okay, next one. 75 over 6. It's a fraction. Don't divide the top by the bottom. If it's a fraction, you write rational. 
So we know it's rational. We do not have a 1 on the bottom, so it's not an integer, and then it can't be a whole number if it's not an integer. Okay. Next one, 4.27. When, when they give you a decimal to start with, you put 4, okay? Put the 27, and then 10, 100. You just put a 1, and you have two numbers after the decimal, so you put two zeros. It's as simple as that. So it's a fraction, so it's rational. We do not have a 1 on the bottom, so it can't be an integer, and it can't be whole. Okay, next, next part. Compare the numbers with an, this, th that's your most confusing part right there of, all, of this whole thing. Okay. So again, you see a fraction, if you can make a fraction out of the number, it's rational. If you can't, because it goes on forever, it's irrational. Then if it is rational, you need to see, gee, is there a 1 on the bottom? If there is, it's an integer. If not, then no. And then if it's an integer, if it's done, if it has the pot, if it's a positive, then it's also a whole. Okay, compare the numbers with a less than or greater than. This is less than, this is greater than. There's an easier way to do it than that if that's confusing. Negative 3.1, negative 16 over 5. Now, when you have a fraction, divide the top by the bottom when comparing. Negative 3.2. Now, what's a bigger number, negative 3.1 or negative 3.2? Now, when you have two negatives, the least extreme negative is the highest number. So you want your mouth to eat the bigger number, okay? So this is your answer right there. That's all I need to see. Okay, 9.6 and the square root of 96. So we have to figure out the square root. All square roots and fra. Okay, 9.79. We can put 9. Point, just go to the nearest hundredth on that, okay? 9.79. So 79 would turn to 80. So 9.80. And you can put a zero there. Okay. So they're both positive. This should be an easy one. That's the bigger one. So it goes this way. It eats up, opens up towards that number. Okay, it always opens up towards the bigger number. Okay, next up. Got the square root of 115, comparing that with 10.72104. So we have to get rid of the square root. So second, key next to 7, 115. Okay, now we need to go out five digits, because that has four digits, because that has... Five, one, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, five. That would go to a one there. So this is actually ten point seven two three eight one. You should have matching decimal places. So they're both positives. So seven two seven two. That is a three. That is a one. Three is bigger. So this is the bigger number. The sign opens up towards that. That's a greater than sign. Okay, square root of 184, and then 15.5698, okay, so, okay, how many, did, how many decimals, that has four numbers after the decimal, so, so should this one, so 13.5646, stop there, but that would go to a 7, because there's a 5 after it, so 13.5647, okay. Well, 13 and 15. 15 is bigger. So we have this. Okay. That's how to compare. Now, the next part, you're just taking a group of numbers and order them from least to greatest. So the numbers on this example are 1 half, negative 2, the square root of 5, negative 7 over 4, and 2.4. Okay, first thing, square roots and debt. When we're comparing and figure out least to greatest, decimals and frac or fractions got to go. So take 1 divided by 2 and put 0 0.5 above it in parentheses. Don't like that square root, so find the square root of 5 on a calculator. 2.24, I would go two decimals out. It would go 2.24. So 2.24, so 
just like that. Don't like that fraction. Negative 7 divided by 4. So you go negative right there. 7 divided by 4. Negative 1.75. Just put it in parentheses. So now we're good. All the square roots and all the fractions are gone. So what's the most extreme negative I have? Well, negative 2 and negative 1.75. Negative 2 is the more extreme. So that's your least number. Followed by the this, but I don't want you to put negative 1.75. I want you to put the original fraction, negative 7 over 4. So that's done. That's done. Now let's get a positive. Should be easy. This, this, and this. Well, that's my least number. 2.24, 2.40. You can put a 0 if you want to match up decimals. That is two digits. That is two digits. That's going to be the next least. Again, you can add zeros if you need matching places. And there you go. Okay? Least to greatest. Or actually, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have put 2.24. I need to put the original number, the square root of 5. My bad. Okay. All right, next one, we got negative 6. We got the square root of 20, 4.3, negative 59 over 9. Negative 6 is fine. The square root of 20, I should probably figure that out. 4.47, there's a 2 after it, so. I don't cross it out, sorry. I didn't mean to cross that out. Just put in parentheses above it. Okay, negative 59 divided by 9. Negative 6.56. Okay. okay, negatives. I got this and this. This is more extreme, but put the original fraction. Negative 59 over 9. So that's done. Now put your next negative. Now let's do positives. 4.46. 7 and 4 point, you can add a 0 that, so 47 is bigger than 30, so the 4.30 comes next, and then the 4.47. Okay, positives you just do normal, okay, but then the negatives you kind of do the most extreme. The highest actual negative is your least number, the most extreme. Okay, next one, negative 13 over 6, negative 2.1, negative 26 over 13, negative 9 over 4. Okay, let's get rid of the fractions. Okay, 2.1, round that to a 7. That one's good. Okay, negative 26 divided by 13, negative 2. Negative 9 divided by 4. Negative 2.25. Okay. Okay, what do we have for negatives? Well, I got this. Put a 0 there so I can match them, compare them, and then I have this. Okay, this, this, and this. This is the most extreme, so you want to put your negative 9 over 4. Remember, don't put this. You use that to decide, but you end up writing that in the answer. Okay, now when I compare these two, that's going to be the next one, negative 13 over 6. Okay, then negative 2.10 or negative 2.1. If you want to drop the 0, you can. If you put it, that's no big deal. And then negative 2. Okay, least to greatest. Remember, negatives is like reverse. Okay, last one, negative 1 over 6, negative 0 0.3, the square root of 1, negative 2 over 13, and 7 over 8. Okay, let's get rid of those fractions and square roots, because I can't compare them with those there. Negative 0 0.17, remember round nearest hundredth. I would do two decimal places. That's good, but put a decimal, a 0 there, so it's a decimal. Square root of 1, that's an easy, square root of 1 is 1, okay, so 1 up top, negative 2 divided by 13, negative 0 0.15, and 7 divided by 8, 0 0.88, remember it goes up to 80, from 87 to 88 because there's a 5 there, okay, negatives, what do we got? 
here, here, and here. Okay, so negative 0 0.17, negative 0 0.30. Well, that's the most extreme. So we put that one. You can put the zero, the zero there. You can drop it. doesn't matter. Okay, next most extreme would be this one. Negative 0 0.17 is more extreme than negative 0 0.15, but put negative 1 sixth because that was there originally. And then that one, but put negative 2 over 13. Now the positives, well you got 1 and 0 0.88. Well 0 0.88 is less, but put 7 eighths. And then with this one you can put 1 or the square root of 1. It doesn't matter to me. Okay. So there you go. Least to greatest.